Folks, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and we are coming uh, at you with game three of the matchup between Odium, Zephos, and Legatus Leonidas. Um, if you haven't seen the first two games, you should go watch it. It is from a best of three series from round one of the Crumpin' Cup that was hosted by Wicked and Happy Puppy on my channel a while back. Um, I really was curious to see some of Zephos' game. He didn't actually get to finish the tournament. Um, but, uh, you know, I knew that he got to play all the way through round one and two, and so that's why I showed this series. Plus, it's been a great series. It is now one-to-one. -one. Uh, Leonidas won the first game, um, and uh, then Zephos won the second game. Um, you should obviously go check those out if you want to see the specific details of it, and hopefully you're not watching game three first anyway. Uh, but let's jump on into the replay here and see what we get for game three. Whoever wins is going to take the series. Oh man, it is a Wood Elves Bretonia matchup, and boy, am I happy anytime I get to see Zephos play the Wood Elves. Uh, this, I, to me, this is one of his signature factions uh, from what I've seen him play, so I'm excited. And he does have a kite army. You can see the Bretonians with just an army with a lot of cavalry and cheap infantry. Again, just to kind of talk these over at a high level, I don't think I'm going to slow it down. I don't think we need to because there's obviously going to be some skirmishing going on. The three Way Watchers up front are the key damage uh, component of a kite army like this, and then the Glady on the Elven Steed. She has the Arrows of Kurnos and the Prey of Aneth Rhaema. And, uh, yeah, she also, remember, has uh, Magic Ammunition, which could be good against Grail units or anything with physical resist. She immediately fired off the Arrows of Kurnos against a uh, Field Trebuchet, but it didn't actually destroy an artillery unit, which stinks. Sometimes the Arrows of Kurnos will do that. And remember that the Way Watchers will be hidden until something gets close enough to spot them. Now, as far as the support for the Way Watchers, there's three Wild Riders. These are excellent light cavalry. And then we've got a couple of War Dancers with Azrae Spear. Very heavy anti-large AP damage, though they don't want to get charged or shot up um, because they are low armor, but very good against armor and large. And then we've got Eternal Guard, four of those in total, Spellsinger, Lore of Life, and they've just got the Power Stone and uh, Earth Blood. I see uh, Lewin leading the Bretonian army, and of course, you know, Lewin's a tough character. Uh, pretty good pick for this. And then if, as far as the uh, cavalry goes, there's quite a few Knights Errant, and then there's a few Knights of the Realm. Um, so a lot of cavalry pick for Bretonia, and that's not a bad choice, because uh, you want a lot of mobility against the Wood Elves. And he has a lot of range as well. You can see he has some Pox Arrows from the Peasant Bows to slow units down, and the Field Trebuchets should be good to pressure any Wood Elf infantry into attacking. Um, and to pressure their uh, own archer units. But remember, he can't shoot at the Waystalkers until he spots them. So like right over here, this Waywatcher is now spotted, and it can actually now be shot at by the Field Trebuchets. But you can also see the Field Trebuchets are trying to get hits on the Wild Riders, and they should. The Wild Riders are a key component to any of these builds. Look at this, the Glady over here pushing against the uh, Peasants, drawing a charge, but then pulling back. And remember, again, attacking in these tournament rules um, using these skirmish units to attack is attacking. So even if you're falling back, you are attacking uh, because he's actively assaulting the Bretonian forces and the Bretonians are attacking as well. They're firing artillery. That counts as attacking in these tournaments. Let's check this out. These Way Watchers are being pursued by cavalry. At least to some... Oh my gosh. Oof. Man, Way Watchers just put down such a beating. Yikes. So yeah, they melted most of this cavalry unit. You can see the Knights of the Realm here charging in, and then over here, more Knights Errant. And they are just going all in, but they get snagged on the Wild Rider and don't make the charge. This is really bad for Bretonia at the moment. They do not want to get caught up in this kind of fight. Not with the Waywatchers nearby and free. They are just going to fire in and just delete the Bretonian cavalry. This is going to cost Bretonia at least three cavalry units right here. So that was a costly engagement. Oh, they lost a fourth one over here. The Knights Errant got ripped apart by the Wild Rider. You can see a Knights of the Realm hoping to come in. Ooh, yeah, Bertonia. This is not great for Bertonia so far. See here the Eternal Guard heading off the infantry. Same thing over here. And then the Wild Riders chewing through the Peasant Mob here. They will excel at chewing through Peasant Mob. I know a lot of things can chew up Peasant Mob, but Wild Riders are particularly good at it. Here comes the Azrae Spear trying to keep Luan out of the... Um, the archers. Oh, Lewin taking a face full of Waywatcher fire right there. Oh my gosh, another. They seek to undo us with magic. Yeah, the uh, the mobility is badly hurt for Bretonia. They really just have this one Knights of the Realm, and you can see the Wild Riders fending it off with the help of an Eternal Guard. There's a little bit of Knights of the Realm that have regrouped over here, and are still pushing in. The Waywatchers, though, still pretty safe. Lewin, oh my gosh, he's in bad shape. Yeah, he's stuck in here. 
He used the Sword of Coron, but um, yeah, he's in bad shape. He's gonna get an Earth Blood. He's routed though. Ooh, Blady's gonna hit him with the arrows of Kurnos, and then here comes a couple more Waywatcher shots. Yeah, Lewin is, he's hurt. He's hurt bad. He takes a couple more shots there. Yikes. Yeah, he's toast. Oh, he even shatters. Wow. Yeah, Lewin is toast. I think Zephos has this, or Zephos has this. I don't think there's anything Bertonia can do at this point. Lewin's gone. Their mobility is almost gone. They've got these Knights of the Realm, and the Waywatchers are still quite healthy and have a lot of ammo. So I think Bertonia uh, has lost this one. And quite frankly, I don't fault him. I'm not sure that I would have a very good chance against Zephos with this Wood Elf build. But holy crap, man. Yeah, I think uh, I think Leonidas is going to lose this one. But I mean, kudos to him. I mean, maybe he'll win it somehow. But kudos to him for a couple of extremely well-played games against a great player. So Leonidas not being a pushover at all in this series. Won that first match. That second one was a toss-up, man. Could have swung either way at any point. And uh, in this one, it does look like it's going to be a pretty firm victory for Zephos. Yeah, definitely a firm victory. I mean, Bertonia just has no answer to what's happening here. The Wild Riders are all over these units back here. They're going to be able to take out the artillery. The Way Watchers uh, did get pressured over here <coughs> by some Spearmen at Arms. The two units still free and firing. And uh, they were chasing off some Knights Errant. Lady is still very healthy. The Spell Singer's still alive. Yeah, you can see it's just a matter of time here. But a uh, gallant finish here. For Leonidas, who, like I said, had a couple of excellent matches, soundly defeated here, and Zephos was going to play his way out of the first round here. Um, I guess, spoiler alert, he obviously didn't win the tournament. You guys have seen the finals already, but um, I think he had to drop out of the tournament at some point. Like, he had to leave, so he wasn't able to finish. But I did want to see these matches, like I said, because I like watching his matches, and these were really good. It was a really fun matchup between these two players, and it's all the more reason why, if we get to have more of these tournaments, you should go check these out. They're a lot of fun to watch. And uh, if you want to watch, the uh, video on demand from the stream is there. All five-something hours of it. It didn't include all these matches. These were not streamed right here. Um, so I'm bringing these to you all. These would not have been seen on the stream. But you can go watch the stream if you want to see all the ones that did get streamed. It's a lot of fun watching. So uh, congrats to both players on some fantastic games. And thank you for uh, both for joining the tournament. Thanks to Wicked and Happy Puppy for having uh, commentated it and hosted it, put the whole thing together. So uh, it's really awesome to have matches like these. So uh, I, I get his build. Um, having the type of build he did here, it didn't work out for him. Uh, but it does make sense. He, he wants the range to try and draw him in. He needs plenty of mobility to shut down archers, cheap infantry, because you don't need a whole lot else versus the Wood Elves. Uh, Lewin would be punishing against a lot of things, but I mean, it just did not work out. The Way Watchers did do the damage they needed to. They were protected well by Zephos, and that's pretty much it. Just uh, not able to pull back from it. But anyway, uh, like I said, great game to both players. Hope you enjoyed this series. I'll be back with more videos on the channel soon. Again, the campaigns are going to be coming back soon. I've been having trouble with upload speeds and then just been hurt for time. And obviously it takes a long time to film the campaign. No, I haven't quit them. They'll still be coming, and I intend to finish them. Uh, sometimes life gets busy, but you know what? We just push through it, and I'm going to keep the content coming. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you all soon.